All right, okay. So one, two, three. Boom! Oh, wow. oh, I nailed that one. I'm Kaz Hamluch, and I've been a film critic for 15 years. You smell delicious, homie. This is good from head to toe. Yeah. This is good. Looking good. <laughs> now I'm stepping away from my laptop and into film industries around the globe to meet the people and see the places behind a revival in world cinema. We should use film to unite us. Cinema can change mindsets, it changes lives. I'll be finding out what Hollywood has to learn from these movie making communities and what they are doing to challenge perceptions and change expectations. So it's our final stop of the series, and we're in Hong Kong the city that sparked my passion for foreign cinema with the famous kung fu films of Jackie Chan and Bruce Lee. <laughs> Hong Kong is made up of 200 islands and despite its relatively small size when compared to mainland China, it's one of the most visited cities in the world. Formerly a British colony, Hong Kong is now part of China but remains deeply connected to and proud of its distinctive culture which blends Chinese, British and local influences. Arrived in Hong Kong, um, only had a few minutes, completely overwhelmed by it all. What we're here to find out about is Hong Kong cinema. It's been something I've been very passionate about for a long, long time. I want to see how this place has inspired some of those movies and why they're not creating so many movies that I might be hearing about in the West. I'm about to meet Ice, who is a young artist and filmmaker who is going to show me around this area, which is Temple Street Market. Welcome to Hong Kong. Oh, thank you. Yeah. I'm glad to be here. It's really exciting. So this area used to be, in the 90s, it used to be like a gangster area. Also, this area is really lively and busy. Let's try some local Hong Kong food. Okay, cool, let's do okay. it. This is an oyster. And these are? Koi Lai Liu Ha. Lai Liu Ha? Yeah. Okay, I like, think like, first time. Yeah, and you know what does it mean? No. Crab peas on its pants. Crab peas in its on, pants? Yes. Lai Liu Ha. Okay, broccoli <laughs> and? Beef. Okay. Yeah, this one is really cool too, okay. you know. Oh, fresh. Shit. What's the big difference between Hong Kong and China, mainland China? They are not that really welcome to the international things. Uh -huh. You need to adapt to their own culture. Uh -huh. You cannot use Google, you cannot use Instagram. Okay, all right. <laughs> Hong Kong is like Asian New York. Gong Gong boy. <laughs> So we have a lot of like fortune teller booth. Hello, how are you? In the next few days, you'll be some an adventures. <coughs> small trouble only, not a serious. Small trouble, okay. Not, right. not, not big trouble, don't worry. Okay. My first full day in Hong Kong, the hustle and bustle here is non-stop. I thought it was busy last night, it's just as busy right here in the day. And we're here actually, it's a cult movie place where it's in homage and in honour of those films from the past. I'm going to go inside and find out what's going on. There's Bruce Lee from Fist of Fury. That is such an iconic poster though, that look as well. I was going to do it there, but I can't do it in a public space. Like. <laughs> My dad used to have copies on, on VHS of Bruce Lee movies. Those were like the first foreign films I probably saw. And the first ones I actually personally chased were the Jackie Chan films. The first one I watched was Police Story, and after that I was completely hooked. The other one is uh, Wong Kar Wai and his films. They really capture a sense of the location. An early one is Chunking Express, which obviously captured the sense of Hong Kong. This is what's really interesting. So the box office in China now outstrips Hollywood, so you make more money here than you do in other parts of the world. So when they, people talk about foreign box office, this is where it matters. I'm going to buy this one because uh, Jackie Chan is my favorite martial okay, arts. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Is he your favorite as well? Uh, I like it, but it's not my favorite. I like Li Xiao Long. He did that on purpose there. He got me. And it was really cool to meet like another Another fan of martial arts and stuff. Like both of us vibing, like me talking about Jackie Chan, him talking about, well, I thought he was talking about Bruce Lee, and he was. But obviously, one thing I did find out is the name here is Lacey Along. Top floor, we're gonna go in and speak to a, a stuntman. You know, the main reason I came here was to learn about Kung Fu, and now I'm gonna meet one of the main stuntmen here. He's going to teach me a little bit about some of my favourite films and some of my favourite stunts as well. And uh, I'm going to show him some more moves. Shoes off, of course. And there he is, the man. 
Hey, hello nice Bill. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. <笑> OK， 咁我教啲基本嘅動作俾你試下先。嗱，嗱，當我哋有支，我揾啲嘢當係支槍啊！嗱，有時成日都喺動作片度會有用用呢樣嘢嘅。嗱，譬如我哋擺啲嘢喺度。未必呢啲係呢啲係係啲武器啦，係個武器。咁我可能一二三一續。哦，五五五 ，yeah， right。好 ，slowly， slowly， yeah， slowly， and， yeah， good。Yeah, good. We love now。又得喎，咁我哋我哋試下打兩下啦。哦。I can't do that. Yeah. No. <laughs> All right. Okay. So one, two, three. Boom. Oh, wow. Cool. I want to ask you one more question. Mm. Let's do it one more time. One more time. <laughs> <laughs> so I want to ask you now um, a little bit about old and new. Um, what are the big differences and changes from the old days to now? 比較會有危險性高啲嘅。咁呢一代因為技術啊，樣樣整咗好多啦，改變咗啦，好多嘢都係試危險，去試再危險，又去試試出嚟嘅。咁啊，有好有唔好嘅。好嘅地方就係、是呃、所有嘢有制度咗，但唔好嘅地方就係可能會、呃、拍出嚟有啲質感係以前有嘅，呢一代就冇咗啦。咁但係我覺得電影係永遠都向前嘅。咁所以冇乜問題嘅，因為新嘅 generation 咁佢哋又會有新嘅設定，有好多唔同類型嘅諗法。咁我覺得係我始終睇對香港嘅動作電影咧，我係幾有希望嘅。因為中國市場咧，咁個市場係大咗好多嘅。You know the one-inch punch? Is that real? Like that? Oh, like that? Wing Chun. Oh, here we go. Yes. Is it real? Is it real? Yeah. <laughs> it's real. It's real. It's real. It's real. We're just heading off to one of the most famous locations in Hong Kong. It's something that everyone who comes here wants to pay homage to. It's not that easy to get to, so we're just going in through the staircase at the back. This place is called Chunking Mansions, and that probably gives away what this place is. It's where Chunking Express was shot. Keep walking. I'm looking up for a reason. You're going to see why in a sec. And there we go. I mean, it is very Instagramable. I'll be honest. I'm very tempted to whip out my phone now. Day two in Hong Kong. I'm here at the State Theatre, the former State Theatre. As you can see, it's no longer used as a cinema, but it was one of the biggest ones in Hong Kong. Um, and on day one, oh sorry, all right, mate. Uh, we are right in the middle of town, and this is where one of the biggest cinemas in Hong Kong used to be. I'm now going to speak to Grace, who is uh, from the university here, and she's written a thesis. About After 1949, uh, the Communist Party took uh, over China, and then the, the whole economics and the dynamics changed in this region. Hong Kong was still the colony of the British Empire. After 1952, there were not so many Hong Kong films could be uh, could export to China, and there are very few uh, mainland Chinese films could also import to Hong Kong. Yes. And back then, they, actually, it was quite amazing because Hong Kong made more than 300 movies per year. Do you think we'll ever have a return of that golden era? I, I actually doubt it. Since the 1980s, the Korean cinema, actually, they started to grow also uh, Singapore in the 1990s then uh, they don't really need to watch foreign films that much. They could produce their own films. Street food is a big part of life in Hong Kong. I've come to Key Sweet Cake Shop, whose homemade cakes and sweets have earned them a Michelin recommendation. Oh, ma'am, that with some tea would be so good right now. Yes, that's <laughs> is that big like enough for you? Let me have a look yes. at that. They're a little light nice snack. Where's he gone? Yeah, that would do him. That would be fine. 
It's time for me to wrap up today, and where better than the iconic Duckling, the only remaining antique Chinese sailing boat still operating in Hong Kong. I've spent the whole day just absorbing Kung Fu, and also I've picked up the subtle differences between mainland China and Hong Kong. That I guess that golden era, that, that period of movie making that I grew up with, you know, the John Woo, the uh, Wong Kar Wai, especially Jackie Chan, that era is gone. They're not really making those big high profile action movies and martial arts films here anymore. And I guess I want to know about the future of Hong Kong cinema. Where is it going? Um, how closely tied is the future of Hong Kong cinema with mainland China? Technology in cinema, I think that's what we're going to find out more about. If it's going to happen anywhere, it's going to happen in Hong Kong first. We came to Hong Kong and I thought, oh, we're gonna just learn about martial arts and a bit about the film scene here. But instead, you guys got me training with this old master. He did kind of rinse me a bit. And all the early morning starts and all the late night finishes, it's all added up. I've had enough. I've heard about this place in Hong Kong. It's called the Petty Person Beating. And now I get to get my own back on you guys. I'm now gonna put a curse on someone, apparently. Let's find out how we do this. Okay. One, two, three. And I put it out? Hi. No, 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 I didn't curse myself there. That would have been a disaster. Oh, there we go. Hit them. That's a big flame as well. This could be bad luck for me right now. Yeah! Yeah! I've just done the petty person beating. The bad energy and the bad people are supposed to be trapped here. If production goes badly, uh, you can guess what happened. <laughs> I want to get to grips with the creative scene here, so I'm on my way to the south side of Hong Kong to meet Jun Lee, a young director whose debut film Tracy is challenging gender norms. Welcome to my studio. Tracy is a film about a transgender individual in a very Chinese setting that tackles different aspects and issues of Chinese family. It's created a lot of noise. Why do you think it's taken so long to make a film like this? A lot of directors reject it. I read the script and I said, I'm in. How do you think the cinema of Hong Kong has been doing? More experienced Hong Kong filmmakers go to the mainland and that is a completely different market. A lot of things don't translate. We can't actually get a permit to shoot a film about LGBT. The currency is different. The language is different. It's not like I grow up in New York and I shoot a film in LA. That was a really fascinating chat with Jin, actually. There's been a gap left behind by an earlier generation going to the mainland where the money is and where all the resources are. And it's like people like Jun who are in their mid to late 20s are, are now struggling to fill that gap, but he has to do it. There's no one else making these films. To get a better sense of the challenges faced by young creatives, I'm checking in again with Ice. Since the last time we spoke, she's moved to Shanghai in mainland China. Hi, <laughs> this is my friend Michi. Hello. So what are you up to now? Why are you in Shanghai? I'm here to get a freelance job. Mm -hmm. And you enjoy it there? Yeah, I enjoy it. Like, it's chill. Hong Kong is really, really busy. I think that's the main thing I've found while I've been here. It's just non-stop. You'll be really happy for just staying for one week. But if you're gonna live there, you'll be so pissed off. <laughs> really? One of the last things I'm gonna do in Hong Kong while I'm here is we're gonna look at virtual reality. Where about? Where, where did you find it? In uh, Central. There's there's a whole arcade full of VR machines. I have so many friends that are 3D artists here. Mm, exactly, yeah. I've got to say a massive thank you for showing me around on that first day. So happy to see you. One thing we haven't done is actually step away from traditional filmmaking entirely. Have a look at how technology can affect filmmaking, storytelling, or will it affect that? Last day in uh, Hong Kong, it's been really interesting. There is obviously a lot of technology here. And I think where that crosses over with filmmaking is with the use of VR. That's one of the big buzzwords at the moment, especially around gaming, but where does it link into film? Where does it link into storytelling? For example, there's a whole uh, VR section at the Raindance Film Festival, which is one of the biggest film festivals in the UK. Is VR going to be the future of filmmaking? I'm off to speak to Alex from Shadow Factory, who is part of one of Hong Kong's leading VR specialists. How would you define VR? Virtual reality is uh, when you totally immerse yourself in a different environment. The conduit right now uh, is uh, a headset. So you put on that headset, and you're transported into a different reality. There's so many different ways that you can tell 
uh, your stories in, in virtual reality. I know you've got some stuff to show me. Yeah, yeah. So I'd love to have a look at some of the stuff you're working on at the moment. Let's go right ahead. Right, let's do it. The first game that we're going to show you, it's called Grab Bag. Mm -hmm. You can look around, you can move in it. It's a complete 3D environment. Cool. You're getting the hang of this, huh? Uh, yeah, I'm getting into it. I better step back, otherwise I'll get punched in the face. Is this a dystopian? Yeah, kind Hong of. Kong? It's a cyberpunky Hong Kong. Cyberpunky Hong Kong. Do you think there's a time where we will have a, a number of movies released in this format? 100%. Filmmaking and VR, there's a lot of uh, aspects that sort of overlap. You basically need to make that medium work for your story as well. You have to guide the story and make sure that people are following and looking exactly where they need to be looking. It's the love baby of game design and filmmaking. So I'm at Palladium, which is a virtual reality arcade. I'm here to find out, basically after Alex spoke to me, and find out whether this format can be used for storytelling. Oh, okay. So now I'm gonna put on a mask. You have to get like a T-Rex Zora. <laughs> mask of Zora. What game are we going to play here? John Wick. Okay. Is that based on the films or is it... Uh... It's based on the film. Oh no! I'm hiding! <laughs> oh no! It is on easy! What do you mean put it on easy? Oh wow, okay. So I'm in charge of what happens next. I just called him over. Put in the earpiece. Earpiece activated. Wow, okay. It's really involving. You just feel a lot more involved in the action. That is it. That is a little bit of the John Wick game. It feels so weird to be back in the room. I really like that. So we're now going to play some multiplayer games. Oh, what was that? All right, that's quite unnerving. Do you enjoy watching films? Very much. And how does this compare to that experience? Films you can just lay back. Yeah. This one you actually have to use your brain and actually get your blood boil. Uh -huh. like, yeah. Makes you feel like you are there. Right. It's like crazy real. Yeah. To get my head around all of this, I'm going to speak to Albert Yao, who founded Palladium and is passionate about the opportunities that VR has to offer. There are currently films and even film festivals that have VR sections, as they say. Um, do, do you consider those virtual reality? So most of those are uh, right now in the market are 360 captured passive videos where you don't have much interaction or don't add interaction at all. So that's uh, not yet to the point where we get true VR. Cool. Oh, whoa, it's dark already, man. The implications for filmmaking and storytelling could be huge off the back of what we just heard. I'm nearly at the end of my trip, but I have one more stop to make. I'm heading to the top of the iconic ICC Tower, Hong Kong's tallest skyscraper, to get one last look at this incredible city. I've just spotted something amazing here. One of the original masters of martial arts, VR and Bruce Lee brought together at last. It's 360, I can look around me now. There's Bruce. Uh, he's doing the, the blocks that I learned from earlier on. Is there anyone here? I'll knock you out. You know, when we're looking at places to come to, Hong Kong was right at the top of my list. It's, it's the place that started my interest in foreign film. You know, the Jackie Chan movies, they were the first films I saw that weren't part of Hollywood. You know, we found out about VR as well, the future of filmmaking. How is technology going to be involved in cinema? And maybe here in Hong Kong, you can see that better than anywhere else. We started off this journey, me and you, when we sat down one day in the office and thought, you know, what, what is the universal story about film that people are interested in? The places, obviously the locations. I will always remember going on the helicopter in Stockholm and seeing some of those sights from the air. This is amazing. And then in Ghana, you know, going on the bike with Togby and seeing the streets of Accra, getting a real sense and you know, the energy of the place as well. That was incredible. Pakistan, I think for me it was going to Liari and speaking to Jami, a filmmaker who's moved there and who's part of the revival happening there. And then here, I think just you know, absorbing the locations. You, you, you fear when you go to some of these places, you think, oh, it's not going to live up to the hype. But Hong Kong as a whole really did. I think what we have proven is that film is a unifying thing it's something that unites us all and it's something that can help bring cultures together. And we've picked places that aren't necessarily at the top of people's lists when they think about films. But there are 
stories here, there's a heritage, there's a history in everywhere that we went to. And they're making new films, far removed from the films of old that we might remember them from. But they're films that I think everyone in some way, shape or form is going to hear about or know about going forward, if they haven't already. I'm here to meet Lee Sifu, who is a Kung Fu master, who incredibly is still practicing in his 80s. Don't be scared, are you scared? Let's, let's right. go, yeah, yeah, you can okay. show me some of the moves. One, and then two, and then, two, and then, and then three. three. Your, your arms are very hard. Yeah, They're very tough. Thank you. <laughs> like somebody stand here. Yeah, so imagining him standing there is a bit higher. Up, 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 like that. <laughs> Good. What? <laughs> Am I in? Yeah. Oh! No! This is a glamorous entrance. After a hard day's work, this is the only way to relax in Sweden. The glasses have steamed up, mate. What? Your glasses have steamed up, mate. What did you say? Your right glasses have steamed up. Shut up! No, you can't get this bit. Oh, God. Oh, I've done it. Oh. Like a professional, like a gazelle, like a beautiful swan. Oh my! This is a. Uh, this is. I think this is probably the the main star kind of dressing room. This would be my one. Look, I need all those mirrors, obviously. Get the lights on. Can we have that for season two? 